a locomotive that was only given oh, a seven-year opportunity to get the spotlight. After that, the locomotive was shoved away in a barn to be forgotten about. Today, I bring this locomotive out of the barn and into the public view for this video. Into the point of focus. Into the focal point. As today, we bring the locomotive out of the grave. We bring it out of the dust. Which is the spotlight charred by many other nickel plate rose sea merchants. This locomotive deserves as much respect as 765 587. 759 deserves as much respect as those locomotives. And I want to dedicate this video to the many, many people that kept the 759 alive for a short time. And I hope you enjoy this video. Hello everyone, Norfolk 8102 Productions here for Nickel Plated Productions. And for today's video, I will be discussing the history and excursion career of infamous Berkshire, Nickel Plate Road number 759, the short-lived steam star. The 759 is part of a class of modern, heavy-duty mainline engines first developed in 1925 and dubbed Berkshires by the Boston and Albany Railroad for the mountains over which they first ran. Locomotive number 759 was one of 80 Berkshires purchased for the Nickel Plate Road, but one of 65 built by the Lima Locomotive Works in Lima, Ohio, between 1934 and 1949. In total, 80 Berkshires were built for the Nickel Plate Road and became famous locomotives due to their fine performance and efficient design, but almost perhaps due to the fact that they were well-proportioned, handsome machines. Train Magazine said in March 1969 that they exemplify not only the engines that saved the railroad, the S-Class engine was one you could depend on. You couldn't do that with any other engines. The S2 in the Steamtown collection, number 759, came with the Nickel Plate's third order of Berkshires from Lima, order number 1184, placed on June 25th, 1943, in the middle of World War II. The 759 was finally completed and delivered to the Nickel Plate in August of 1944, with 69 inch driving wheels and operating boiler pressure of 245 pounds per square inch, giving out attractive effort of 69,000 pounds. The 759 was principally a freight locomotive, rolling across the hills and plains of Ohio and Indiana at speeds of 50 to 70 miles per hour.
The 759 ran a good life on the nickel plate, pulling fast freight and occasionally passenger service. Until dieselization came knocking on wood, steam slowly started to die off. In May 1958, the nickel plate was overhauling the 759 in the company's great shop at Conneaut, Ohio. Number 759 was the last steam locomotive the nickel plate overhauled. Soon after her overhaul, she was retired and sold off to Elf Nelson Blount on October 16, 1962, and added to his collection at Steamtown, USA. The thought of operation seemed highly unlikely. In 1967, Ross Rowland Jr., a Wall Street commodity futures broker who was on the side founded and served as president of the High Iron Company in the mid-1960s, Rowland's purpose was to restore mainline steam excursions using heavy-duty motive power. In 1967, Rowland had his eyes set on a major publicity stunt for his company. In two years, it will be the 100th anniversary for the golden spike being driven into the ground at Promontory Summit, Utah. He planned to commemorate the event by offering a heavy-duty, steam-powered golden spike excursion from the east to the Missouri. While planning, he made an agreement with Steamtown to use one of their engines in exchange for excursion profits to complete a roundhouse for its engine collection. The engine that was chosen was none other than Nickel Plate Road Berkshire number 759. Also, the Norfolk and Western leased to the High Iron Company, the former Nickel Plate Roundhouse in Conneaut, Ohio, for purposes of restoration. After limited repairs, number 759 steamed up on August 17, 1968, and made several trial runs. On August 30th, she was christened with champagne and took off for Buffalo with a 15-car train. She was painted in a beautiful blue and gold, as well as receiving matching blue and gold passenger cars. The consist was made up of one RPO baggage car used as a tool car, three exhibit cars that were converted from Pennsylvanian baggage cars, two lightweight coaches, a PRR twin-unit diner, three more lightweight coaches, a Baltimore and Ohio dome car, an open car named Rocky Mountain, and a PRR observation car named a Mountain View. The nickel plate Burke led the Golden Spike Limited from New York City to Kansas City, where Union Pacific locomotives DD40X number 6900 and two SD40 units took charge of the train, as well as Union Pacific number 8444, from there to Promontory Summit, from day 6 of the trip to day 12. After a week on Union Pacific trackage, the Golden Spike Consist met back up with the 759 at Kansas City.
759 led the Golden Spike Limited until day 16 of the Golden Spike trip, when GG1 number 4902 took control of the train in Baltimore, Maryland. The Golden Spike Limited was a success for both the High Iron Company and the Berkshire. Right after the trips, number 759 was returned to Bellow Falls, Vermont. After the nickel plate Burke returned to its home, she began to receive more cosmetic work and started many trials for her new excursion career. In the late 1970, she began to take part in many excursions both sponsored by the High Iron Company and Steamtown. In total, she operated a total of 13 excursions, excluding the Centennial, two of which were for Steamtown while being leased to the High Iron Company for many others. September 13th, 1970, she did a trip around the Horseshoe Curve in Altoona, Pennsylvania, originating in Harrisburg, heading to Gallitzin. No footage of the excursion survive, but here's some audio and photos of the event. September 21st, 1970, the 759 ran a revenue freight on the Western Maryland. In January 1971, the Nickel Plate 759 ran another excursion over the Western Maryland, running from Baltimore to Hagerstown. The excursion was dubbed Teacher Special for Area Educators Only. February 20th and 21st, 1971, the 759 pulled an excursion dubbed the Shenandoah Special, which would be a 475-mile round trip. On this excursion, the locomotive blew out its left cylinder head less than a half hour into the trip at Shepherdstown, West Virginia. The excursion continued behind Norfolk and Western SD-45s. <laughs> On May 1st, 1971, the 
the Nickel Plate Burke pulled the eastbound number four, the Pocahontas, on what was to be the last Norfolk and Western passenger train, running between Roanoke and Norfolk, Virginia. For the trip, the engine received minor upgrades as well as being painted up like a Norfolk and Western steamer. Nickel Plate 759 also let the Scranton Flyer between Hoboken and Scranton, Pennsylvania in a joint High Iron Company American Freedom Train excursion with the 759. Presentations about the AFT project were made during this trip. On October 27th and 28th, 1973, the 759 locomotive took an excursion from Boston to Montplier, Vermont, sponsored by the Steamtown Foundation. Not many people knew this, but this excursion was to be the last of the locomotive. <laughs> Right after the excursion, the 759 deadheaded under steam to Rouse's Point, New York, for winter storms in the Delaware and Hudson Roundhouse there. Since the locomotive had been scheduled tentatively for excursion duty on the DNH the following April. <laughs> Unfortunately, negotiations for that excursion broke down, and the DNH management, in an apparent fit of piqui, had the locomotive pulled out of the promised warm roundhouse stores and set out in the icy winter of Upper New York State, but neglected to fully drain the various pipes, connections, and fittings containing water, and froze and broke. This led to the Steamtown Foundation suing the DNH for its negligence. In the end, Steamtown won, but the locomotive was badly damaged. <laughs> the lawsuit, number 759 was returned to Bellow Falls, being towed dead in a train during the spring of 75. In settlement of the lawsuit, the DNH contracted out repair work on some of the freeze damage. <laughs> on July 6, 1975, a Steamtown crew fired up the locomotive and tested it at the engine house lead at Riverside, Vermont. Then it rested unused until the spring of 1977, 
when Steamtown received our request to use the locomotive in a mainline excursion. <laughs> Steamtown management planned the completion of the freeze damage repairs and sent an application to the FRA, or Federal Railroad Administration, for an extension on the deadline for replacing the flues. When they gave the locomotive a preliminary hydro test, a flu burst. Recalling the experience of having two flues blown out while one of Steamtown's order locomotives was in service, and at the suggestion of Steamtown's boiler repair contractor, Steamtown's management decided to reflue the locomotive. <laughs> contractor removed all the order flues and Steamtown ordered a new set. Then sponsorship for a proposed excursion fell apart. Steamtown ended up canceling the order for the new flues and a partially disassembled 759 awaited an uncertain future. <laughs> Today, the Nickel Plate 759 is on stag display at Steamtown in Scranton, Pennsylvania, along with its water car it used on excursions, as seen here. <laughs> due to the fact that there's another nickel plate Berkshire operating. To be honest, the 759 deserves a lot more recognition than it currently has, as it pulled one of the most famous steam-powered excursions and had the honor of pulling the last Norfolk and Western passenger train. The loss of the 759 was probably the third most terrible thing to happen to an excursion locomotive. The first two being the 5629 and the CBNQ 5632. However, to some, it was so moving that when the news got out, a group in Midwest America started an organization to restore what is now, without a doubt, the most famous operating steam locomotive in the United States. But that's a story for another time. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a few things about the infamous Nickel Plate Burke. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel and Nickel Plate's channel. And until next time, this is Norfolk 8102 Productions signing off for Nickel Plate Productions. Take care and have a wonderful day. Look at me, I'm a train on a track, I'm a train, I'm a train, I'm a chicken train, yeah. Look at me, got a load on my back, I'm a train, I'm a train, I'm a chicken train, yeah. Look at me, I'm going somewhere, I'm a train, I'm a train, I'm a chicken train, yeah. Look at me, I'm going somewhere. I'm a train, I'm a train, I'm a chicken train. Yeah, it been a hard day, yes it has been a hard day, yes it has been a hard day, yes it has. I'm a train, I'm a chicken train, I'm a chicken train, I'm a train, I'm a chicken train, chicken train. Yeah. Look at me, I'm a train on a
Chicka train, I'm a chicka train, chicka train, chicka train, yeah.